Welcome to Nalf's Nonsense. Here is a map of Europe's passenger train network. And here is a map of the United States' passenger train network. Now for all the complaints people in Europe have for a service like the Deutsche Bahn, these train services in Europe are an absolute miracle compared to the services that we have in the United States. So why is the USA so bad at trains? Actually, in doing research for this topic, I learned that we actually have to be a little bit more specific with that question. We can't just ask why the USA is so bad at trains because the United States is actually a world leader with freight and cargo trains. There was some deregulation and privatization of the freight rail industry in the 1980s, and that really led to the United States becoming a world leader in freight transportation. 38% of all cargo moved in the United States is moved by rail compared to only 8% in Europe. So we need to be more specific and ask, why is the USA so bad at passenger trains? The United States passenger train service is called Amtrak, and its most successful service happens in the Northeast of the United States, the Northeast Corridor, which basically serves from Washington DC up to Boston, with stops in some other cities along the way, most notably, New York City. Now, last year I took a train from Stuttgart to Paris, a distance of about 650 kilometers or so, and it took less than three hours. A ride on Amtrak's best train service from Washington DC to New York City also takes a little bit less than three hours. However, it's only covering about half the distance. A comparable distance would be the full ride from DC all the way up to Boston, which would take about seven hours. And this is the best train service that the United States has to offer. There are countless examples of how slow, expensive, and inefficient passenger train travel is in the United States, especially compared to Europe. So why is this? It seems like there's a few reasons for this. Number one would be population density. Check out this map of population density in the United States. Now compare that with Europe. Simply put, a lot of times having railway connections in some of these sparsely populated areas would just be connecting nothing with nothing. Another thing that comes back into play is the fact that a lot of United States cities were developed after the car was a thing. American cities are pretty sprawled out, something we call the suburban sprawl. European cities, which were developed and built before the invention of the car, were built with clear old town city centers where everything extends out from. So in the United States, even if a metropolitan area is able to be reached by train, you're still gonna need another form of transportation to get to your final destination. And with this in mind, a lot of Americans just decide, okay, I'll just take a plane because I'm gonna have to take a taxi or an Uber when I get there anyway, and so I'll just go with the plane. Another factor that I think is pretty interesting is the ownership of the railroads. Amtrak is a relatively young entity having begun in the 1970s. And because of this, it never really got the opportunity to build its own tracks. They are, for the most part, operating their trains on railroads owned by private companies. Here's a map showing the railroads that Amtrak itself actually owns. Only 730 miles of the 21,300 it operates on are under its ownership. A huge percentage of these railroads are owned by the private companies whose priority is to ship freight and cargo, not passengers. So naturally, these freight trains get priority over Amtrak's passenger trains. For example, this Amtrak route from Chicago to the California coast has an on-time arrival record of 31%. And I thought the Deutsche Bahn was bad. Amtrak claims that only 1.4% of these delayed arrivals are their own faults. And the rest, 98.6%, they blame on the companies that own the tracks. So in addition to long and expensive train journeys, that uh, pretty abysmal on-time arrival record is not encouraging many passengers to hop on their trains. Now this problem doesn't really come up in Europe. For example, the nationalized French railroad operator SNCF actually owns all of the railroads that they operate on. They don't need to defer to freight and cargo trains, making the passenger the priority. So these are a few reasons for why the United States seems to be so far behind Europe when it comes to passenger rail travel. Thank you for listening to my nonsense.